This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got John Barkley back with me, the Deputy Mayor of North Granville and also the Chair of the Police Services Board. Thank you very much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me, Kathy. It's, uh, it's a treat and it's, uh, it's great to be able to share some of the information with the general public about road safety. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. The nice weather is here. Snow has melted away, and hopefully we're not going to get any more. We might get a little bit tonight, but <laughs> but yeah. hopefully we've seen the end of it. But we've got to talk about the warmer weather. There's children out and about. There's bicycles. There's kids running. We're going to talk about that and, and safety zones around the school areas in particular. Right. Uh, so basically, uh, we're mounting a campaign this month to... Uh, encourage people to be observant of the uh, community safety zones uh, and the school safety zones. So there's signage up, uh, it's well signed, um, and a cautionary note that uh, if uh, speeding fines are doubled in community safety zones. So school safety zones are um, 150 meters before and after a school with lowered speed limits during school hours. So uh, there's more of those than community safety zones. We only have three in the town of Campbell right now, uh, on Collier Street, on Concession, and County Road 44 in front of KPS. So where they're posted, if you are caught speeding within the community safety zone, it's double the fines. So uh, as you said, with the warmer weather, we're encouraging parents and, and residents to be aware and uh, drive safely. And it's, it's all day long, Monday to Friday during school hours, it's all day long, not just pick up times and drop off times is right. Is that That's right? right? Right. Yep. That's during right. school hours. That's right. Because it, it, it does get a bit congested because parents and the buses and everything like that too, all the more reason to slow down. You never know whether a child or, or a parent or an adult is going to be coming out between a car. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and slowing down is such an easy and preventable way of not having an accident. Yes. And so, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, um, when I'm driving in town, sometimes I set my cruise control to 40 kilometers an hour, just to keep me honest. But uh, we do also employ what we call digital speed spies. And I find that very helpful. I do too. Uh, for myself, in terms of keeping me on track and keeping me honest about, uh, you know, uh, driving to the speed limit or below the speed limit. That's so, right. Uh, and, and sometimes right. you're coming in from a, a faster highway speed, like you could be coming in from, uh, I, I know with, um, is, is, is Kempfel Public School, is that the one, I, I, yeah, I'm so terrible at the map, you're coming in yeah. from uh, yeah. from North Gore, so you're, you're out in the highway, you're sort of used to getting a little, going a little faster, or, yeah. or uh, Holy Cross, you're used to coming in from uh, Oxford Mills, you're, you're going a little faster and you've got to slow down, substantially. Yes, well, um, a couple of years ago, we instituted a gateway signage program, mm -hmm. which uh, as you're entering Campbell from any direction, uh, any of the access points, you'll see a sign that says 40 kilometers uh, begins. And as you leave the Campbell, you'll see 40 kilometers ends. So uh, a lot of the older residents, you know, that's a lowering of the speed, uh, you know, on county roads uh, were originally 50 kilometers an hour. So there's been some adjustment of people learning how to drive to the new speeds. And it's not only uh, within Campbell, but in the hamlets and the in the rural settlement areas as well. We've got these gate this gateway signage happening, um, and a lot of the newer residents don't realize that on municipal roads, if it's not posted, it's 80 kilometers an hour, and that's that's a fairly high speed, especially mm -hmm. where we don't have paved shoulders and people are walking or or even horseback riding in some instances. They, they so, are actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we were lucky. Uh, in 2019, uh, we formed uh, the North Grenville Road Safety Committee, which was a partnership with the uh, Grenville Detachment of the OPP, the Lanark Leeds Grenville Health Unit, uh, Public Works uh, from the United Counties, um, Public Works in North Grenville, uh, and the Police Service Board basically uh, hosted that committee. And we developed some road safety campaign themes so every month we have a theme, and this month, obviously, uh, with the warmer weather and kids uh, biking and walking, uh, we, we're promoting uh, road safety around schools. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I mean, we can make mention now, too, it's not just around schools, too. Uh, like, children are starting to walk from their homes, too. So, like, even when you're walking up the, the, the streets of or residential streets, we've got to watch out for our children. Yeah, yeah, 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, can can we make mention uh, what we, we mentioned earlier? Maybe you can just do a little uh, follow up, wrap up of the sustainability fair that you had on the weekend this past weekend. Well, um, I used to be more heavily involved, of course, before I got busy on council. But uh, yeah, it was very successful. Uh, the largest electrical vehicle showcase in eastern Ontario. Uh, there were lots of vendors there, a uh, wide variety of vendors from uh, people who make uh, soap to people who, um, you know, uh, deal with uh, products that are, you know, ecologically friendly. Um, we had beekeepers there. We had artists there. Um, we had uh, the Ferguson Forest Centre there. Uh, a variety of different vendors, uh, and it was very well attended. Uh, also, um, there were presentations in the theatre which uh, I managed to sit in on a presentation uh, that was led by the campus, uh, Kempful Campus. And it was on all the programs that they're running on the campus, uh, dealing with uh, agri-food, dealing uh, with uh, agricultural education for the public schools that are resident there on the campus. And it was very inspiring in terms of the programs there mounting and the ones that they wanted to get underway. So um, that was great. And there were other presenters there and I don't, I, I you know, I, I wasn't able to attend all the presentations, but they were great, they were wonderful. Excellent, excellent. And, and you know what I, uh, what I also would like to mention, like two weeks ago, uh, tomorrow actually, we had a pretty bad ice storm in our area too. I live in Smith Falls and I uh, work in Kempville. Kempville got hit pretty hard and I was amazed, like the, the, the next day there was trees down in residential areas. They got cleaned up so quickly. I mean, the, the township people and, and our tree uh, arborists got out there. It, the, the town was cleaned up really, really fast. Yeah, it was it was great. Of course, we uh, back in 1998-99, yes. we had the ice storm here, so a lot of the uh, residents, longtime residents, you know, were aware of and lived through and survived those three weeks in January. Uh, this was much smaller and, and yeah. warmer weather, but uh, it was amazing how quickly everybody responded, including staff. You know, our emergency operations uh, committee, you know, was right on top of it. We had warming stations up. Um, you know, residents opened up their home, people who had power, you know, uh, you know, opened up their doors so people could charge their phones and have a hot cup of coffee. Uh, and local businesses did the same. So it was really heartwarming and, and gratifying to see how everybody stepped up and they stepped up so quickly too. Um, and I should mention that we've, uh, four residents in North Grenville, and I think we were one of the hardest hits in Eastern Ontario, uh, as far as the ice storm went. Um, I should mention for residents uh, in North Grenville, we've extended the hours at the transfer station for them to bring brush um, there. So uh, we've added additional days for just the re reception of, uh, you know, of brush that uh, and limbs and trees that might have fallen. That, so absolutely. we ask that no, no stumps, but uh, yeah. practically everything else. Yeah. Oh, they were fast at getting the, the streets cleared up and everything like that. But I mean, days after people are cleaning up their own properties and everything too, but yeah. it, it was amazing. And, yeah. And for people who uh, aren't able to get to the transfer station, I'd remind them if they could just hold on to their debris. We have, I believe in the first week of May, we have uh, yard waste pickup. You know, our waste management company provides uh, that service two weeks in the spring. So the first week of May is the first week that people can bring uh, bundled four feet long, no thicker than two or three inches. Anyways, all the information is on, on the, our website, northgrenville.ca, uh, about what they're allowed and, and how to prepare their material for pickup. And that'll happen the first week of May. Oh, well, they're going to be busy this year. They're going to be busy yeah. this year. Now, you say you're the, the chair of the Police Services Board, too. What what kind yeah. of uh, responsibilities is that? How often do you meet? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. We meet monthly, and uh, one of the key features is we get a fairly detailed report from the uh, Grenville Detachment of the OPP uh, with a lot of statistics in terms of, you know, minor crime or assaults, etc. cetera. Uh, we also... Um, and uh, uh, bursaries to the local high schools uh, annually or semi-annually in one case. Um, 
We basically provide oversight. We can't direct uh, the OPP necessarily, but we can express concerns and we can ask for increased enforcement. And we have a pretty good connection between the Public Works Department who do uh, road assessments and when residents you know, are concerned about the speed on their road, Public Works can come out, conduct a, uh, an assessment that sort of tracks the speed over 24, 48 hours. And those detailed reports are sent to the OPP so that they can more effectively use their resources in terms of their traffic management officers going out at certain times of the day um, on certain roads. So uh, you may not see uh, evidence of enforcement, but it's definitely out there and it's very targeted. It's shotgun approach rather than, well, no. Sniper approach rather than shotgun approach, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Well, I thank you very much for joining us today. I know uh, we, we originally got you here to talk about uh, the warmer weather and, and community safety around schools and everything, but you're always very informative about so much that's going on in North Granville. So I thank you for that. And well, once again, welcome. we need to stay safe around our schools and uh, drive slow. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much, Kathy, for helping me get the word out. Thank you very much. I've got the Deputy Mayor of North Granville, John Barkley, and the Chair of our Police Services Board. Thank you very much for joining us today. Great. Thank you.